Well, John Gong is a professor of economics at the University of International Business and Economics in Beijing. He joins us now live with more. John, China has faced a lot of criticism, namely from the West over Tibet, and its response has largely been, look at the development. So let's look at the development. What's happened in Tibet over the last 70 years? Well, I thought the, the West criticism of uh, Tibetan's uh, development is probably least centered on the economic development. I mean, uh, we'll first we'll look at the life expectancy. I think this is the most striking number here. The life expectancy as of today compared to 60 year, 70 years ago when, uh, when um, the Tibet uh, autonomous region became part of China uh, was three times more than that. Today it's more than 70 years old. Used to be only, I mean, sorry, two twice as that. Used to be only 30 some years old, 31 years old. Now it's 70 years old, more than 70 years old. The second thing is look at the economics. Uh, the GDP in uh, in Tibet autonomous region has really increased a lot. Uh, it's uh, only it's about like 80 percent to 90 percent of China's average GDP. So you know we're talking about uh, you know 80,000 uh, dollars per capita. Compared to you know only one third of this uh, in uh, 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 the Ramsar, uh, where the Tibetan exile has been living so far in, in India, so I think you know these numbers speak for themselves. So um, you know people are living longer, a lot longer. Economic development is 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 getting much much improved. We you know in Chinese central government bought basic infrastructures into Tibet you know, in terms of building. Railroads, airports, electricity network, telecommunications network, water supply. So all these things were not existent, uh, you know, before it became part of China. Beijing accuses, quote, anti-China forces of trying to sabotage Tibet's social stability. Uh, how so? John Gong, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, go ahead. I didn't hear your question quite. Uh, Beijing is accusing anti-China forces of trying to undermine uh, social stability in Tibet. How so? Oh, I see. Yeah. So I think most of these um, events, uh, incidents, uh, were mostly related to uh, the exile uh, government in uh, Damsara, as I pointed out. Uh, there are still people there who don't, uh, you know, still want to roll the clock back to the days of uh, before 1951, uh, and some of them actually resorted to violence. They had resorted to violence in the past. Um, but I think what's what's good so far is that uh, you know at least Dalai Lama is opposed to this violence. Uh, that is his official stance, and I think his position with respect to uh, Tibet has changed a little bit. Uh, you know, since 2016, when he um, delivered a uh, a little bit of a, a conciliatory speech. So I think at least the situation is getting much much better. We don't hear um, you know many incidents like this in recent years. Uh, well as in, I remember in 2008 or 2009. There were basically, you know, terrorist attacks in Tibet initiated by the uh, Tibetan uh, Youth Congress based in Dasana.